All right, welcome back. This is the last video in the series. We have the mechanic all set up. We're just going to add a couple of little features that are going to make the project look a little better. I'm all about adding little effects. I think that just even the simplest little effects enhances games quite a bit. And the first thing we're gonna do is change how our camera acts. If we go back in here and play this, Whenever I jump, you see the way the camera follows him, both on the X and Y axis, is uh, it's very sudden and very jerky. So I want to make it a little smoother. So if we go up here in our initialized group, we set our camera up to begin, and then we pin it to our player and follow him around, which is fine, but I want a little more natural feel to it. So instead of pinning to the player, we're going to manually set up the code for the camera to follow the player and then add a little uh, LARPing action. So I'm going to delete this action right here and go get our camera object and in the properties, go to edit behaviors, and I'm just going to delete the pin behavior. We do not need it. In our initialized group, we can add an event and go to system and I'm gonna type in every tick. So this means every frame that the game is playing. So if it's at 60 frames per second, this is going to move the camera 60 times every second to the position that we set it to. So let's add an action, get our camera, and we want to set position. And that position for the X, we're going to use something called LERP and that stands for linear interpolation, which means in animation terms, it is the journey in which an object moves from one point to the other. This is similar to using the tween behavior in Construct 3 as the LERP adds an ease into whatever position it is moving to. So first we have to call the expression, which is LERP, L-E-R-P, and then we're going to put some values in a parentheses. So open parentheses, and you see we get a little dialog box that shows us we need A, B, and X. So the first number is going to be the X value of our camera. So type in camera dot X, and then we're gonna separate these with a comma. So now it needs the second number, which is going to be the second value we want to move between. So from cameras X to the player's x, so player.x, and then a comma, and then the last one is, it says down here, interpolation factor. You can play around with this. I'm going to go with 0 0.1, and then close parentheses. So you should have something like that, and then I'm going to tab down to the y, and we're going to do the same thing here. I'm going to type in the expression lerp, parentheses, and I'm going to go with camera dot y comma player dot y comma and for this one I'm gonna go 0 0.2 not a huge difference but that lerping is going to make it quite a bit smoother so let's go ahead and check that out okay there is no jerking of the camera no matter what direction we move and you can see see it in action here if I go to the left and I stop the camera takes just a very short amount of time to catch up with us but it's not a sudden movement and the same with our y-axis up and down you can see the camera catching up uh, one way we can check that is we can click on our camera object in the project panel go to our properties and tick initially visible let's try that again now we have the camera here, and you can see the camera trying to catch up to our player's origin. And it's a lot smoother movement, and it doesn't get too far behind, and it just it feels better. Okay, I'm going to make that invisible again, and our camera is set up. Okay, the other thing I want to do is the dust particles or smoke or whatever you think it is when... Uh, Mega Man is sliding down the wall. So we're going to make a particle system and create like a little smoke trail. So I'm going to double click anywhere in the layout 
and scroll down and get particles, insert it, click anywhere to insert it. And then I'm going to change the size to uh, 10 by 10. Then we zoom in and I'm going to get the brush tool. Our space here is 10 by 10. So I want the size of my brush to be 10 and hardness of zero, uh, the opacity at full, which is a one and we, the smooth yes or no, I'm going to go with smooth and then I'm going to get a light gray color and I'm going to find just somewhere right in the middle of this area and press down one time and that gives us our uh, particle and it has some fading going on around the edges so that'll help it blend in and look a little more like smoke. Okay, let's exit out of that. And for our purposes with this selected, I am going to set the angle to 270 so that it's going up and down. Then I'm going to scroll down here and change some properties. So we want continuous spray and the spray cone. I'm going to make this pretty thin. I'm going to go to uh, 10, 10 degrees. So you see it got pretty thin. I'm going to zoom in just a little. We can preview and looks like quite a bit. So I'm going to take the rate down to 18 and then the size I'm going to change to 12. And then our speed, I'm going to drop down to 20. And the reason why it's shooting down now is because our speed is only 20, but our acceleration is a lot less in the other direction or a lot more in the other direction. So I'm going to change that acceleration to negative 10. So now we have something looking a little like that. Okay, back up here, our speed randomizer. Uh, I'm going to go 200. And then our size randomizer, I'm going to go 10. And actually, our speed randomizer, maybe 150. I kind of like 150. Everything else, um, gravity, angle randomizer, and opacity randomizer to zero. I'm going to leave speed randomizer at 800. Fade to invisible and timeout is going to be 0 0.5. Now, if we go back to our speed randomizer and go 200, I think that's probably going to do a better job for us at 200. That should do it for the particle. I'm going to stop that preview, head over to the event sheet. So in our initialize group on our on start of layout event, Let's add an action, go to particles, and let's set the position. And I'm going to set position to another object, and that's going to be our player. And that image point, let's leave it at zero for a second. Hit done. And we have it off to the side here, but when we play, it sets it right to our origin point. And it stays there because we haven't told it to do anything. So let's do a couple of things. First off, with our particle selected, let's scroll down on the properties to edit behaviors and add one. This time we'll use the pin and back on the event sheet. Once we set the position of where we want the particles to start, we can then pin the particles to our player. So let's add an action, go into our particles, scroll down to the pin behavior and pin to an image point and that's going to be our player and our image point uh, well we're going to change it but we can untick angle because we're not going to need that let's hit done and then let's go into our player object and on our wall slide animation this is where I want this particle to appear so I'm going to go to our origin tool and our origin is set up to the bottom middle so over here in our image points panel, we can right click in an empty space and add a new image point. So I want this particle to come out of uh, his hand area. So we know with our collision box that this is where the wall is going to be. So I don't want the smoke to overlap the wall uh, necessarily. Maybe a little bit is okay, but I want it to come from where his hand is making contact with the wall. So it follows him as he's moving downwards. So with the image point tool selected and that image point one, make sure you're on image point one. I'm going to click somewhere right around his wrist area 
And I think that's good. An X of 22 and a Y of 6, I think that should do it. And that's the only animation we need to do that on. So we can exit that. And if you noticed, I'll go back into it, the wall slide, the origin is image point zero. And the one we just created is image point one. So back here, when we pin it, we can pin it to an image point. I want to pin it to image point one. If we play that, it sets it to his origin because that's where we set it. But when we get on the wall, you see that it starts coming from his wrist. And then when he hits the ground, it moves back to his origin point. And that's fine because we don't need this. We're going to take care of that. But we want to make sure that this part is working correctly, which it is. It's coming from his hand. Cool. Okay, so we only want that to appear when he's sliding down the wall. So if we go into our event sheet, uh, right off the bat, we can say that we don't want those particles to be emitting from our player. So add an action, go into our particles, and I'm going to type in spray and set spraying. And I want to say not spraying. If we go back in, it's not spraying. But if we, as soon as we jump on the wall, uh, it's not spraying because we haven't told it to spray. We've only told it to not spray. Okay, we are done with the initialize group. I'm going to close that up. And I'm going to go open our wall and jump slide group. So in here, when we are falling, we're next to a wall. And A or D is down. That means that we're hugging the wall, right? We set our max fall speed to 200. So this is where we want to set it to spray again. So I'm going to add an action. Particles, type in spray. Set spraying to spraying. And we'll see what that looks like. And there we go. It starts spraying and it doesn't stop. So now we can come up here to this platform does not have wall to left or right. That would mean that anywhere else other than up against the wall and uh, hugging the wall and doing the wall slide, anywhere else we can set it to not spray. So that would be here where there is no wall to left or right. So let's add an action, particles, and Let's uh, type in spray, and that's set spraying to not spraying. Let's test that out. We got us a little spray as he's jumping off the wall. It sprays while he's sliding, and you see when he kicks out, there is no, uh, there's no dust cloud that follows him. So it's only up against the wall, and then if we jump away, walk somewhere else, it's not spraying. So... That should cover everything. And with that, we are done. Hopefully you will be able to use this in a project that you have or maybe build a project around this idea. Or if you're just trying to learn a little more about Construct 3, I certainly hope this helped. That is going to be it for this series. There is a growing library of tutorials for Construct 3 on this channel. Go ahead and give them a look if you haven't already. Let me know what you think in the comments and I will see you in the next tutorial series. Thanks for watching everybody.